Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Overcoming Depression and Anxiety brought to you by Healthy Me Summits. I'm Joanna Rushton, your host, and we're being joined here today by Ian White. After obtaining his Bachelor of Science from the University of New South Wales and graduating from New South Wales College of Natural Therapies, Ian has been practicing successfully as a naturopath for over 35 years. He is the founder of the Australian Bushflower Essence and a fifth generation Australian herbalist. Ian, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you for making the time to do so and sharing your area of expertise with us today. It's a pleasure, Joanna. So Ian, I think what um, would be lovely for our audience um, to be able to connect with you is just to give us a little bit about your background um, as a naturopath for the last 35 years but also what led you into working and specialising specifically with the Australian bushflower essences? As you mentioned in the introduction, that I'm a fifth generation Australian herbalist. My great-great-grandmother came to Australia in the 1850s when Australia had a gold rush to work as a herbalist. My grandmother and great-grandmother were both herbalists and they were the first white people to study the medicinal properties of native plants. And um, I had the good fortune of living next door to my grandmother in an area just near Sydney called Terry Hills. Our property is backed onto National Park. And as a young boy, I spent as much time as I could, usually involving wagging school, pretending to be sick so I could spend the day with my grandmother, helping her make the tinctures and extracts. She'd take me for bushwalks, point out all the plants. And unfortunately, she died when I was 10. She'd had cancer all her life, which she kept at bay with various herbs and she went traveling, lost her herbs and uh, the cancer really took its toll. So all that information was lost the second time. The Aborigines had it and they lost it with smallpox, influenza when the white settlers came. And for me, the legacy was that in the bush there were all these very powerful healing plants. And I went off, did a science degree, um, got very sick traveling in India and rebuilt my health with herbs and yoga, tai chi, meditation. And after I finished my science degree, I tried to, or during that, I tried to marry natural therapies to it. And by the time I finished, all the interest I had was in natural therapy, so I did my naturopathy. And at that time in the 70s, the only flower essence system was bark flowers. And I thought strange that no one was working with Australian plants, given my experience of my grandmother pointing out all the various healing plants. And so I thought someone should do it at one point and, you know, went on practicing. I used to run workshops and bark flowers. And then a, a dear friend had cancer. Uh, he asked me because of my background meditation, we'd hold a healing circle the night before they were going to do surgery. And all our friends were quite shocked. He was a very charismatic, successful, healthy person to all purposes. They operated, found that cancer was all through his body that the doctor said there's nothing more they could do. So I continued the healing circle in my home on a weekly basis for him. There was some prayer, meditation, directing energy. And shortly after he died, about six months later, in the meditations I started getting pictures of plants, told where to make the plants up and what their healing qualities were. I was already well established as a naturopath then. so. I found this lovely synchronicity if I was making a, a plant that grew nearby, the patients I would see later that day or the next day would all need that particular plant. So, you know, it gave me the opportunity to A, check synchronicity, but also to see if the plants were working. And for two years, I gave the remedies, which I was getting great results with, to various healing colleagues, doctors, acupuncturists, naturopaths, just to see if they could verify and get the same results I did. And then I was very happy with the results. I started publishing the information after two years. And since then, it, the essences have gone all around the world and have for, for, for many years. Well, you know, I certainly use the Australian bush flower essences and um, have done for um, a number of years since I've moved over here to Australia. And I really do love them. And this is one of the reasons why we really wanted to give our audience an opportunity to connect to other remedies that they perhaps haven't necessarily thought about that could actually assist them 
in either their management of depression, anxiety, um, but also in their day-to-day -day, um, general mental and emotional well-being. And so there's a few things that, that I really would love to talk to you about today. Obviously, we want to really sort of understand if there are very specific flowers and essences that work to balance the body and, and um, assist with depression, anxiety. And then the other thing that I know a lot of our uh, viewers are going to want to understand is if there's been actually some scientific evidence um, behind what, you know, I know from personal experience has, has been able to help me, but what the, what the research has been that, that, that's sort of clarified that as well. So where, where should we start? Should we talk a little bit about the research or, or should well, we go let's into go the in and essences? talk a little bit about how the essences can work in depression. And one of the remedies I'll lead in and, and share some of the research with that, if, if you like. And basically, there, there's four main types of depression. There's the seasonal effect or SAD uh, syndrome, seasonal effect disorder. There's uh, bipolar. There's uh, the more common mainstream depression. We can also put in postnatal depression. They're the four main types. And I think if we look at um, postnatal depression, you know, about within the first two weeks of a woman giving birth, you know, 40 to 50 percent will have um, a bit of a downtime. There's, you know, it's called the baby blues. You know, there'll be a bit of weepy, feeling a bit sad. But postnatal depression is a lot stronger than that. It will last for quite a long period of time. And the symptoms are far more intense. Now, if someone was to go to a pharmacy or a health food store, there's a range of combinations which are ready to go. They're not concentrates like a lot of practitioners we use. They're just very easily accessible. One of them is called the woman essence. Now, there are a number of things that a woman can both do to help prevent postnatal depression, but there's also things that if she's actually got it. It's known that if a woman has a bad relationship or had a bad relationship when she was younger with her own mother, it definitely increases the risk of postnatal depression. Now, there's a remedy which is actually flowering everywhere in, on the east coast of Australia at the moment called bottle brush. And in fact, people listening to overseas are likely to see it. I've seen it a lot in Europe. It's been imported into the United States. So this plant has many qualities. One of them, it helps the bond between a mother and her child, but also that child's bond back to the mother as well. Now, that child could be an adult. And, you know, it could be someone in their 60s and their mother has been dead for a number of years. And if their relationship was never good, that adult child can still do a lot to heal that imbalance in the relationship. And bottle brush is fantastic for that. So maybe before the woman is contemplating pregnancy, she can be looking and um, trying to resolve any issues with her own mother. And, and that bottle brush is in the woman combination. Also, if there's a a history of irregular periods. It could be um, also painful periods that the woman's having prior to conception. That's also going, also going to greatly increase her risk of postnatal depression. So, you know, before getting pregnant, it would be very good if the woman can work with the woman essence. And they, they come in a liquid form. They take seven drops on rising, retiring. So it's really easy to do. And they would usually take it, say, for... Uh, about two weeks or 10 days from when they guesstimate their period is likely to start up until the end of the, of the period. And they would do that two to three cycles, and that will help regulate the menstrual cycle. So there are a few things which are really nice to do beforehand. And the other thing is if the woman is very busy right up to the pregnancy and there's, you know, quite amazing stories of women going into labor and they're on their phone doing business right up to the very last minute. And they're also going to be more prone to getting the postnatal depression, like allowing towards the end of the pregnancy, just letting go of the external world a little bit, focusing on themselves and um, going inwards rather than being right out there in the world. 
and there are some nice essences in the woman one for that. There's also a combination called calm and clear, which is a great one for people who are very busy and speedy and lots going on. They need to relax and chill out a little bit more. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, when, when the baby comes, and especially if it's the first uh, child that the woman has had, she's probably going to underestimate the impact of um, her sleeping patterns and, and basically the lack of the sleeping patterns. So it's great if she can rest up as much as she can beforehand, just in case, you know, you, you, you know she's up every couple of hours and, and missing out on a, a great deal of sleep. So the calm and clear is a good one, especially for people who are busy. There's always things to do and they end up, oh, I'm going to have an early night tonight. I'm going to go to bed at you know, 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And, and yet life kicks in and they've got things to do and get excited by new things and it's back to the old midnight, 1, 1 a.m. and going to bed and getting you know, five or six hours sleep. So some of those things beforehand are very useful. Now, the bonding is very important. A lot of women have great expectation of what's going to happen. As soon as they see their baby, it's going to be the, the best thing that's ever happened and they're going to be flooded with love. It's can't wait to hold their baby in their arms. Now, if there's a health issue and or maybe the mother is choosing not to breastfeed, but if there's a health issue and the baby's taken away and doesn't get to be put on the breast in the first six hours, that will severely affect the bond between the mother and the child. So let's say the baby has to be taken away, put in a humidity crib, as what we call it in Australia, and doesn't get back to the mother for you know 12 hours or even till the next day. It doesn't seem much, but that not going on the breast in that first six hours, that can impact on the bond for decades afterwards. And I run workshops around the world on the bush essences. When we do bottle brush as an essence, I ask women, is there anyone here who's had a child that did go on the breast in the first six hours and one that didn't, if they noticed a difference. And, you know, we have women saying, look, my son or my daughter are in their 20s or 30s and I still don't feel like I have the bond to them as to the other ones. So if the woman's gone through everything and then she's not feeling connected, she's not feeling the bond to her child, that can also be a trigger for the postnatal depression kicking in. So the bottle brush is a, is a crucial one. Also, obviously, there's tremendous change in the woman's hormonal cycle, you know, between being pregnant to when she's got the oxytocin coming through during the birth and then you know, she's breastfeeding. So all those change of, of hormones can also have a huge impact. And there are remedies um, like the she oak in the woman essence, which is the same shape and size, the seed as on the tree as the woman's ovary. And also a flower called bush fuchsia in there, which works on the hypothalamus. Now, the hypothalamus and the ovaries regulate the hormonal cycle for women. So especially when she's gone through pregnancy into the birth, a lot of change. And those remedies will help regulate it, make it much easier for the woman to stay in harmony and in balance. So um, you know, resting, the bonding, the hormonal balance coming through are also going to be very important um, features to and considerations to help prevent the postnatal depression. Now, if a woman is not getting a lot of support, maybe she's um, living in a, in a community where she doesn't have close friends, maybe um, her own mother's not there, family, there's no one around, um, that's going to put a lot of extra stress in there. And, you know, there are remedies like the dynamis, just to give a little bit more energy and oomph coming through so they can cope with that. But some of the emotional things that they're likely to feel can be addressed with the woman essence, that lack of support and feeling a bit isolated and alone. And that sense of feeling alone is a very key factor which comes through in most people who are feeling um, depressed. Now, I'll mention the combinations because they're easy to get. There's one called Cogniz Essence, which is a very good one for mental clarity and thought. And for a lot of people, whether it's postnatal depression or any forms of depression, they feel like, oh, my, my mind, it's just like I'm not thinking clearly. It's all fuzzy. And, you know, especially for women at that time, if they've got the postnatal depression, that's a common symptom. So, you know, it can be an alternation. They might be working for two to three weeks with the woman essence, and then they can switch over to the cogniz essence. 
And again, if someone was just experiencing um, other types of depression and the clarity of thought is not there, then certainly the cogniz could be another one which would be very useful to help them um, get better um, quality of life in that one, ease some of the major symptoms of the uh, depression. Absolutely, and, and with um, uh, children when they've got exams, I mean, we've, I've just been teaching in Japan recently and there's a lot of pressure over in Japan where the children in primary school uh, are doing homework sometimes up until 10 o'clock at night because there's the parents are really pushing them to get very good uh, grades so that they can get into a better high school, which means they're going to get into a better university. You know, children should be running around when they're you know, six and seven rather than studying till 10 p.m. So, you know, if there's any form of study, the cognizance will enhance that. It'll help with lots of learning problems, really en enhance that. Um, now, in fact, when my daughter was, um, you know, a teenager, I think she was 14, she went to one of her school friend's house and, and he had a bottle of Cognos there and he, and he said to her, oh, I find this really good, it helps me study. So she very proudly said, my dad makes those remedies. So, you know, like, you know, teenagers are great. And in uh, Australia at the moment, the final high, high school students are doing their last exams. So, you know, like the... If when you get an exam just just before going in there, the cognizance would be a great one to take for greater clarity and focus, and you know it's it's also a good one for coordination as well. My wife's a, a harpist in the opera in Sydney, and if she's got a very difficult solo or um, to play, and sometimes you know she might not be playing anything for 10, 15 minutes, her fingers are getting cool. She'll take a dose of cognizance, so her coordination is very good when she comes in there. So cognizance is when you've got overwhelm, when you're not thinking clearly, you've got tasks to do, do you want to be very focused and, and good clarity of mind. The calm and clear is like you might be really stressed and someone who is depressed or anxious is having to really push themselves to get through their activities during the day. When they come home, you know, they're all wound up, they keep thinking about all the things they had to do or they're very stressed by that. They can take the calm and clear to help relax and unwind. But we have some people who spray their partners with the calm and clear mist when they come through the front door so they can be a nice human being that can relate to the rest of the people in the household rather than bring back all the problems that they've been thinking about during the workday. And some people don't sleep very well. It can be a number of factors. Sometimes it's their minds thinking of all the things they've got to do. Or it could be just one thing, like maybe they had an argument um, and they're thinking about that argument, what they should have said. Now, what did they mean when they said that? Or if there's something you can't stop thinking about, maybe it's a legal situation, you know, and you're going through it all. There are remedies in the calm and clear to help shut the mind down so you can relax and unwind. Also, some people get very tense, you know, they go to bed and their shoulders are tight and their jaw is tight and their remedy is there just to relax them so they're not going to be grinding their teeth at night and if they're more relaxed, there's less chance they're going to wake up during the night. And, of course, you can spray the, the bedroom with the Calm and Clear spray. It's got essential oils in there as well as the essences just to create an environment where they're more likely to go to sleep. You can also... We have a cream of Calm and Clear. You can rub the feet with the cream. It helps bring the blood from the head down to the feet. So it stops that busy mind so they can go to sleep more readily. And they used to think that with depression, lack of sleep was a symptom of depression. They've changed their view now. They're starting to realize that lack of sleep actually leads to depression. It's a major trigger creating it. And I'm sure there's... A lot of people interested in health are going to be listening to these videos and they probably exercise, you know, do some meditation, that they would um, you know, take supplements, have good quality food, probably drawn to you know, purified water, organic foods. But the one area they seem not to be focusing on in their health is sleep. You know, 
we live in very, very busy worlds. Everyone, you know, in Japan, for example, the most popular time for personal use on the computer is between 1 and 2 a.m. It's the one time they finish work, they've got a little bit of me time, and, and then, you know, they're going to be back going off to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. And it's probably a bit more extreme in Japan, but, you know, it, it's the same in most developed countries that we're... We don't have 24 hours in the day anymore. So people trying to cram everything in they used to be able to, they're just running out of time. Everything is speeded up. People are feeling stressed and harried. So A, you've got to decide to let go of some things, but also if you know, be aware of how much sleep am I getting because that will allow you to feel more calm and centered within yourself so you're not going to um, react as much to things around you. And you're going to be less anxious if you're sleeping a lot better as well. So calm and clear is, is a really nice one. Also, it'll, it'll change your priorities rather than trying to just one more thing and cramming as many things as you can into your day, just slowing down a little bit more. And I, I think one of the best things a person can do for their well-being is meditate. You know, 20 minutes of meditation is the equivalent of about an hour and a half of sleep. So not only will you relax and let go of a lot of stress that's building up the, during the day, but it can help make up for that deficit in um, lack of sleep. And, you know, we have a combination called meditation essence, which some people take just before meditating, allow them to go even deeper and get even more benefit from such a wonderful practice. So, Ian, you know, what I'm loving uh, about what you're sharing with us is that you've actually got very specific names for um, different blends of flower essences um, because I have no doubt I'm certainly one of them. I, I wouldn't remember the exact name of the relative flowers that, that have these certain beautiful qualities that work, um, you know, with our own systems. Um, so a way in which you've been able to connect um, the essence of those flowers with what part of the body or what kind of benefits um, you're going to gain is by giving them some really great names. What I'm really curious to to understand, and I'm sure the same with our audience, is how do the actual essences, um, because they're not they're not herbs, and I know that you know a lot of our audiences would probably relate quite easily to. Yes, I've heard that you know uh, herbs are, are quite commonly used to balance various, various systems of the body, but they haven't necessarily connected to the fact that flower essences, you know, also can do the same. And, and that's what we're really um, talking about here. So are you able to describe um, how it is that, you know, when you draw and maybe, um, maybe if you could describe how you actually draw the essences out of the flowers um, in the first place and concentrate them and, and then how are they actually it's an energetic um, expression of the flower that's working with our energy system to actually help balance the various hormonal systems. Is, is, is that right? Yes. I mean, there's if we look at Ayurvedic medicine or, or traditional Chinese medicine systems which have been around for thousands and thousands of years, during that period they've observed um, the body, human nature, and understand wellness and illness very well. And... The basic premise in both those systems, which are the oldest medical systems in the world, is that probably 95% of our physical symptoms stem from emotional or spiritual imbalances. And not only that, but they've been very specific. You know, we've been talking about um, anxiety in this series of interviews. Now, fear and anxiety are related to kidney in Chinese medicine. Grief is associated with the lungs. For example, we've been... Um, and I will answer your other points of the questions as well. We've been donating our essences to orphanages in Brazil for a very long time. And when we started these programs, on average, the children were getting six to seven cases of bronchitis each per, per child per year. It was, and it was costing the government nearly 50 reais at the time uh, to treat them with antibiotics. Now, once the essences started being incorporated and the main ones we used were dealing with the abandonment that here are these children whose parents don't want to, are incapable or are dead and not able to look after them. 
And so there's a lot of abandonment. There's a lot of sadness and grief that they don't have parents or a family. So we've been dealing with those emotional states with predominantly with the essences. After a year of using the remedies, the instance of bronchitis had dropped from seven cases per child per year to less than one case per child per year. So when you focus on the emotional imbalance, then the physical can have a nice flow-on effect. It's like a preventative. And every um, organ has a corresponding um, emotional state that goes with it, for example. You know, if we have problems with the liver, then um, the emotion associated that is more anger and resentment. You know, and there's uh, expressions such as SOL to describe someone is, you know, angry and grumpy. You know, it's that, um, excuse the French, shit on the liver. So, because that irritation, that annoyance, if that's if you're irritable, cranky, resentful, that's going to have a flow and effect to liver. So, the beauty of the flower essences is they're able to work on that emotional state. So, um, you know, you might have someone, for example, who um, had a lot of grief. Maybe they've been married for 50 years, their partner died. Now, in Chinese medicine, certain emotions would also trigger the next one. Grief can lead to anxiety. So suddenly, they're left with a lot of grief. They're missing their partner. And that tree, or which has been scraping against the side of the house they never used to worry about, never bothered, suddenly, you know, is that a prowler? Is that someone? They become far more anxious if they're holding on to the grief and sadness. And um, fear will lead to anger. So, you know, people who are really battling with a lot more anxiety and fear, they're going to be more prone to having outbursts of anger. An example, this be a, you know, three-year-old child runs across the road. You know, doesn't look, just runs across. The parents, mortified by this, run across the road to get the young child. And when they get there, they don't just sort of hug them and say, oh, darling, I love you. Uh, you know, please don't do this again. I mean, it's, don't you ever cross the road again. The fear that their child was get, might possibly be killed is going to lead to anger. So we can also see not only do the emotions affect specific parts of our body, but also unresolved emotion will flow on and affect another emotion in there. So we can treat the emotion, we can also treat the emotion behind it, which tends to be triggering. So for the anxiety, it's great dealing with a lot of grief. And if we don't resolve the anxiety, then there's going to be, you know, more outbursts of anger and reactions that way. Now, flower essences have been around for thousands of years. The earliest recorded use were Egyptians of collecting the dew of flowers and putting it, taking that internally for emotional and problems. And in Europe, the earliest recorded use of flower essences was Hildegard von Bingen, who, you know, the, the previous Pope's last act basically was to make her a saint. It's a slow process, canonization in the Catholic Church had been going on for nearly a thousand years to try and get her to that point. And she also collected the dew of flowers to treat emotional imbalances. And many cultures, including the Australian Aborigines, they would float flowers in water and drink the water, getting not only nutritional quality, but also, as you mentioned, that vibrational healing quality. And if someone's not feeling well, they, they walk out through nature, they're going to feel a lot better. They're picking up the basic energies in there. You're going to feel, oh, you feel a lot calmer, a lot more relaxed. So working with flower essence, it's a way of concentrating that healing energy. And... The technique is simulating what's happening in the making of the dew, where flowers are picked under ideal conditions, placed in bowls of water, and the sun actually releases out that healing vibrational quality. It takes about two hours in Australia and about four hours in Europe, where the sun's usually not as strong. At that point, the flowers go limp, and the, the energy is in the water, which is a concentrate. It's diluted down to a neck and one more level, which is the practitioners use as a concentrate to make up the remedies for their patients, which is another dilution. So the combinations we've been talking about are that third dilution, which are ready to be taken. So the nice thing is if, if you're dealing with, um, let's say someone's just going through a real angry period, usually two weeks is sufficient time. If they've been angry for years and years, then obviously we're going to be looking at taking it for long. It could be up to a month and then reviewing. Or if there's more serious issues, then we can take the remedies for longer. Um, now, herbs can work on the body in symptoms, 
but they're not working at that emotional level. So we can put homeopathy, fluorescences under the umbrella of vibrational remedies. So we've got the flow and effect working directly on the body, but we've also got working at a causative factor. We're dealing with the anxiety or we're dealing with the grief or we're dealing with the anger, which is producing those imbalances on, in the body. So you're getting a benefit of both. And we've got a combination called purifying. Now, you know, I recommend to people take purifying, have a, a good detox cleanse during the warmer summer months for two weeks. You know, you might do some juices and just, you know, changing the diet during that time and taking the essence. And not only are you working on, you know, like the organs like the liver and lymphatics, large intestine, but you're working with the emotions associated with them. So the large intestine is that holding on. And bottle brush is also work, which we've talked about for the bond between the mother and the child, is also working on that large intestine, that sense of the emotion of letting go. If you're hoarding in emotions or physical things, then physically you're going to start holding things in as well, which is going to lead to things like constipation. So not only are you getting a nice tonic for that large intestine, but you're looking at that emotional component of large intestine, which is holding on. So you're getting, you know, like a double whammy. Now, the remedies are very powerful and potent as well, not that they can't have a strong action outside of the emotional sphere. And one of the remedies that we use a lot is one called electro, dealing with electromagnetic radiation, mo many forms of radiation, gamma radiation. Um, it's, it's even been used in Belarus in dealing with nuclear radiation. So listeners will remember in 1986, Chernobyl exploded and there was a lot of nuclear radiation released from, from um, that accident. The winds were blowing and they took most of the radiation to um, the Ukraine, but more, the worst affected area was Belarus. It was directly downwind from Chernobyl. And there's an organization called Green Cross. Gorbachev, the former Russian leader, is the head of it. And like Red Cross, which is focusing more on health, they're focusing more on the environment. So there is a number of medical specialists, endocrinologists, cardiologists, neurologists employed by Green Cross who are monitoring the children in Belarus during the most of the year, the ones with the highest level of radiation are taken to the Alps in the summer where they try different techniques, remedies, etc., to reduce the radiation level. And I said we were donating our remedies to Green Cross, the electro combination, and the electro was the most effective thing they ever found for reducing the radiation levels. It reduced the radiation levels by 43% in these children in two weeks. The next most effective treatment they've ever come across was 21%. So it's doubled the, the next most effective treatment in reducing radiation. So I was teaching a workshop on the weekend and a woman came up to me and she said, look, you know, like, I just want to tell you again about this amazing story with her daughter. And the daughter had a fall. She was you know, eight or nine, was taken to the hospital to get x-rays, and she was given the electro just beforehand. So you're not absorbing as much of the radiation. You know, they tell you it's safe. They put a lead vest over you, and they're very quick to leave the room before they press the button, but it's very safe. And in fact, um, in cancer, the most likely causes of cancer coming up are, are likely to be prescribed medication and radiation, our background radiation we're all being exposed to. Anyway, this, uh, they couldn't get an x-ray on the girl and they thought the machine was broken, put her onto other machines and again, nothing. And the woman said, Look, sorry, I gave the electro and they, they said, well, Okay, maybe no, it must be the machine. And so they decided they put a set of keys and they x-rayed the keys and they got the image very clearly. But they couldn't get any of the daughter. Now, normally you'll get your x-ray, which is important to know if you've got the broken bone or not, but you're not left absorbing as much of the radiation. And, you know, same with um, mobile phones or handies or cell phones, depending where you're listening to in this uh, interview, putting them up to our head, you absorb a lot of radiation, especially children doing it. They're thickness of their skull is half the thickness of an adult. 
So, and they've got more fluid in there, which can conduct radiation more readily. Now, our, our Electro is a 30 mil bottle. So it's a bit hard. If you keep it next to your body, it has a wonderful effect of not allowing you to absorb as much of the electromagnetic radiation. Now, um, especially for women, probably the majority of women don't have pockets. So it's really hard. Where are they going to stick a 30 mil bottle? The only option is, you know, in their underwear, which is quite awkward and <laughs> unseemly. So we actually came up with pendants of a number of remedies, including the electro. So people can wear it around their neck. It's a stock, a concentrated form. So if they're using their phones or in front of their computers or whatever they may be doing to help reduce that electromagnetic radiation, the but absorption. They, they can still take it under their tongue as well, yes? Absolutely. And you might have a pendant, but you might also have been on the phone for, you know, like a really busy day, you're having to ring around a lot of people or making um, sales or, you know, renovating your house, talking to builders and plumbers. And so you're on your phone far more than usual. We'd reckon we'll probably take a dose at the end of the day as well. But it's just a, a nice one. We, we've got Wi-Fi, we've got digital phones, we've got the, the mobile phones. We're, we're exposed to a lot more radiation than previous generations. And, you know, this is also a major trigger for things like anxiety that studies are showing as well. And, yeah, and of course, if people are starting feeling anxious, they're uncomfortable, they're going to produce um, cortisone, um, other hormones as well, uh, cortisol, um, you know, all these have quite negative impact on our emotional and our physical well-being. So the calmer we can be, the much better. So again, calm and clear, helping the person to relax, not be as reactive, getting better qualities of sleep. All of these things are going to reduce the amount of anxiety, it's going to reduce the amount of um, negative chemicals the body is naturally producing in response to that, the adrenaline, the cortisol, etc. And those, those hormones which produce when we're stressed have a huge impact on things like dementia, for example, let alone the quality of life. If you're anxious, you're not going to enjoy yourself and the quality of your life is not going to be as good if you are not anxious. Yeah. And there's very specific remedies in there dealing with the anxieties and fear, in, say, in the calm and clear combination. Or if it's extreme, we've got a combination called emergency. <laughs> you don't leave home without it. I, I, I think um, is it American Express probably stole our catch cry with that one. And there's a remedy in there, and... It, when you look at the flower, it looks like a person screaming. It looks very much like the Edward Munch, the um, Norwegian painter's very famous image of the scream, someone on the bridge with their mouth open screaming. And this is the remedy we use for terror. So we've got one anxiety and fear, but if it's really extreme, then in the emergency essence. And, you know, a lot of people find that when they're anxious, fearful, just a you know, a couple of drops of the emergency can really calm them down. So it might be a certain situation they find stressful. They might be in, at work and they've got to present a paper. They've got to do a little bit more public speaking. Could be to a small or larger group, mm -hmm. you know, and they get really anxious about that. It could be children, teenagers or adults who have got exams on, you know, and they're, and they're really tense and uptight. And um, the emergency is a really nice one for calming them down, for example. You know, and there's creams, there's sprays, there's, there's drops. It's not only do they work very well on uh, humans, but they work very well on animals as well. Wow. So just to, to recap um, the, the names that, that you have, because I know that, you know, certainly if I was listening to this, um, the things that I'd be connecting to straight away were more of the symptoms that you were um, expressing earlier and thinking what was more relevant to me. And I'd be, you know, trying to remember straight away the uh, the benefits of, of the certain remedies. So I know we had the women's essence, which is obviously for specifically for women, helping them to, to balance themselves uh, hormonally, both, um, as you explained, pre and post pregnancy. Yep. And even just normal cycles and, and at menopause as well. <laughs> it's great ones. It's uh, remedies in there dealing with, say, the hot flushing and the mood swings, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a nice one just for the women. There's also the calm and clear, helping with sleep, 
just relaxing the person down, uh, taking the, the emotional charge off them. The cogness for mental clarity and focus, if they're feeling overwhelmed or not thinking very clearly, enhancing learning. The emergency is a nice one, just, just to have on hand that if you, you know, in extreme de um, depression as well, there's a remedy in there, the Waratah. It's probably the most famous flower in Australia, and it's a, this is for the black night of the soul when it's real despair. And we can only imagine, for example, if someone's suicidal, the amount of pain they're in that killing themselves is their best option. So the Waratah is a great one for going through, you know, that extreme black night of the soul. Uh, and that's just a nice one just, you know, as, as a good one to have in your, in your handbag or in your wallet, something like that just to deal with when, you, when you're feeling just not very good at all, bring you back into a balance. And, you know, the electro is a good one. Just, you know, electromagnetic radiation, other forms of radiation, have a big impact on our general well-being, leading us to increase, say, depression, not sleeping, and also being anxious. I think that's, um, you know, it's a big subject. We're actually uh, interviewing um, a David Doddart, um, who specializes in EMFs, um, electromagnetic frequencies and radiations. Um, for our audience to have a better understanding of just the impact that uh, these frequencies have on, on our brain, on our brain frequencies, um, and on our own electromagnetic field ourselves, um, and how they can, you know, the stress of what we're exposed to can be pe a precursor to anxiety and depression. So I'm really looking forward to that interview as well. And, and the electro offers such a beautiful, natural way of um, dispelling and neutralizing um, all of those nasty frequencies. So um, I highly recommend um, people look into the electro and the science that has been documented behind the electro um, as well has been very, very significant. Um, yep. And I think that's important for people to understand as well. Yes, Joanne. And, and you know, like overseas, I, I've run a number of times in the last couple of years um, a, a one day workshop called Mental Health and ABFE, the Bush Essences, and they've been um, organized by medical doctors in Japan, it was by psychiatrists who are working with the flower essences in um, mental health areas in psychiatry. So, you know, they, it, it's, it's um, good to see that mainstream medicine in certain areas is also adopting the essences and, and realizing they're getting quite wonderful results with them. And, um, you know, it's... Um, Probably we might uh, let some of the viewers know about uh, the course next year we'll be doing on that ticket. So we're going into a lot more detail. We haven't even touched on things like um, bipolar or, you know, postnatal psychosis and some of the other ones. Or there's a lot more seasonal effect disorder. There's a lot more information we can show how the essences can be very beneficial in all these areas. And so could you share with our, you know, our audience some of the courses that you've got coming up that actually, um, you know, are focused specifically on those areas that you've just spoken to because, you know, our audiences um, are, are very much more, you know, focused in on, on the depression and anxiety. So if they know that there's available learnings out there and workshops to aid themselves, um, then it's important that they know about them. Absolutely. And if someone wants to go to our website, because, you know, we have teachers all around the world who are uh, running the workshops, whether it's South America or the States or Europe or here in Australia, for example, um, New Zealand. So, you know, the level one workshop is a nice introductory one. Next year I'll be doing a, a webinar early in the year on, on mental health so they can um, be over uh, three evenings so they'll be able to get all that information um, on on the website. But, you know, go to the website, have a look under our uh, tab of courses and you'll find, um, you know, someone who's running the courses in an area near you. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Um, Ian, you, you absolute wealth of, of knowledge and information. I love also the way that you've, you've made it so easy to, um, to understand and, and for people to be open and, and receptive to it. Um, you know, I, I think that is also a really important part of, learning about other remedies and other forms of therapy um, that perhaps aren't the everyday option that people go to first of all. Um, but the information that you've shared has really 
clarified just the amazing benefits of um, Australian bushflower essences, um, but the amazing benefits of um, what has been a, a tradition um, for thousands and thousands of years um, in many, many cultures as a healing modality. And I think that we forget that sometimes. We forget the wisdom um, of our ancestors and what they've used before we think of a drug as the way that it's been uh, pharmaceutically created these days. Uh, we had very effective remedies um, that, you know, were used to deal with the challenges that we often come across still today, mentally and emotionally. So I want to thank you for, for sharing that information. Um, also, Ian, I, I've got one, one last question as well that we're uh, asking all of our viewers, uh, sorry, all of our speakers. Um, and that is to share with us um, from the understanding that for throughout time, um, our you know greatest philosophers always knew that you are what you think, what you tell yourself and, and how you speak to yourself. And neuroscience is now uh, validating that 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 wisdom, if you like, by showing us you know that the brain, what it is that we tell ourselves, our physiology and our biology starts to give us an experience of that through our body. So we're putting together um, a, a book, a Healthy Me Summits um, book on affirmations to put together and, and help to inspire our viewers um, across the globe with I am affirmations from all of our speakers that they have used at some point um, in their own healing process or just in their life journey themselves. So I was wondering if you would be able to share with us perhaps a, an I am affirmation that you may have um, tuned into or used for yourself over the years that uh, has, has helped you and encouraged you and, and given you confidence on your journey. Probably the, the one I think most of us can benefit through the most is loving and accepting ourselves. And um, I'm not sure I phrase it in the I am, but uh, more um, I, I love and accept myself. I think it's such a, a powerful one. And one of the things we look at is sabotage that people have. Consciously they're wanting an outcome, but the subconscious gets in and sabotages. And the bottom line of the sabotage, we feel we don't deserve, we're not good enough to have the goal that we want to do. So um, maybe I am loving and accepting myself fully in this moment and at all times. I would, and, I would, I would take that one. I would use that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, you know, you've got some amazing speakers, many different modalities being used. And I think the nice thing of flower essence is you can, you can have someone who's an acupuncturist, a herbalist, a medical doctor. They can incorporate the bush essences without impacting in any negative way whatsoever their other modality that you know they can be doing what they do they can have the essences to continue on for their client um, once they're taking it or someone might be getting different modalities of treatment and it, there's no harm in working with the essences themselves and for me it's great that there are a lot of doctors trained uh, healers who are using them but the beauty of flower essences is that anyone can prescribe it for themselves that you don't need a seven years of medical study or four or five years of natural therapies to realize that, yeah, I'm feeling really sad or, you know, like I'm uh, feeling quite anxious in myself. So we can recognize what that emotional state is and there's something we can just go ahead and work with with that because we can recognize our emotional state. Yeah. Um, beautiful last message to, to share with our audience, exactly that. And I know uh, for here, where I'm based in Sydney, um, I'm able to obtain the uh, Australian bushflower essences from a number of different um, health healthcare providers, also in, in local um, um, shops, health food shops as well. Um, you, you have your distributions um, through many, many different um, places here in Australia. So I really do encourage people to look out um, and, and to, to have an experience. Um, I was just saying to uh, one of our previous speakers I was interviewing, um, it's important to have experience before judgment. And so if we can go out and, and be open to experiencing something new and seeing what uh, that experience has been for the individual before we pass judgment on whether or not something is right or wrong or good or bad, then I think we're another step closer to uh, 
the healing process. Yeah, very nice way to finish on. <laughs> Ian, thank Thanks. you so much. Thank you for your time. Um, I have so many more questions that I'd ask if I if I had time, then then I would. Um, but thank you so much for what you have shared with us. Um, I have no doubt it's going to be of great information and benefit to our audience. So thank you again. Thanks, Joanna. Take care.